Lay down the weights at the beginning to make sure you're going to get the full extension and are recruiting the right muscle fibers. Stand holding a lightweight dumbbell in each hand with your palms facing each other. Bend forward at your hips, keeping your back slightly arched at all times and your knees bent. In this start position, your back should be horizontal to the floor, not rounded at all, with your knees bent for better balance. One thing, if you find holding this position tough on the back of your hamstrings or on your lower back, then lie face down on a high bench or reversed on an inclined bench with your arms fully extended down and proceed just as you would standing. Okay, now that you're in a stable position with your arms hanging down perpendicular to your torso, inhale, hold your breath, and raise your straight arms out to each side and upward as high as possible. Exhale as you return your arms to the initial position. Pause for a moment, then repeat into reps. See how he's keeping his arms in line with his shoulders? That's perfect. And you can keep a slight bend in your elbows as long as your upper arms stay in line with your shoulders. Here's a few ways to laser target particular muscle groups. If you're aiming to develop your posterior deltoids, start the exercise with rounded shoulders and raise your arms as high as you possibly can. Don't squeeze your shoulder blades together at all with this variation. Try to keep the movement at the shoulder joint alone. To work the middle trap and rhomboid muscles, round your shoulders in the start position and squeeze your shoulder blades together hard at the finish position. In all, try to keep your arms as straight as possible without being locked. That'll give you your maximum range of motion, which goes a long way towards maximum effectiveness. This next set of four exercises is designed to sculpt and define your shoulders. We're going to begin with the seated Smith machine press, pyramiding up the weight for four sets of 12, 12, 10, then eight reps. Second, we'll demonstrate the Arnold press, developed by and named for you know who. For the Arnold press, we'll start heavy for the first two of three sets, eight to 10 reps on the first two sets and 12 reps on the third lighter set. Then we'll move on to the overhead dumbbell lateral raise. Three sets of 10, 10, then 12, going lighter again on the third set. Finally, we'll round out the sculpting program with the reverse pec deck fly. Three sets of 15 at the same weight. Let's see how it's done. Now we're going to use the Smith machine to work the deltoids while giving secondary emphasis on the triceps. First, it's important that you set the machine and seat properly. Adjust the seat so the bar can come down to the very top of your upper chest. Many people make the mistake of bringing the bar down too far in front of them, but I think of it this way. The bar should almost graze your nose on its ascent and descent. Take an overhand grip on the bar, hands four to six inches wider than your shoulders. Unrack and lower the bar to the starting position. Now, while inhaling and holding the breath, Use your shoulders to push the bar straight upward to arm's length, being careful not to lock your elbows. Pause at the top for a moment, then lower the bar back to the starting position and repeat with proper form. Just a note for those of you who really like to pile on the weights. While Smith machines are designed to be self-spotting, a spotter is still a good idea for particular exercises like heavy presses or squats. Because you're probably not going to worry about balancing the weight, you might be tempted to push yourself to the limit. So having a spotter can be a handy and wise movement, allowing you to use the Weeder forced reps principle and to stay safe. The Arnold press works several muscle groups throughout the shoulder and upper back. Because this unique exercise involves an unusual twisting action, I recommend you start with relatively light weights as you learn and feel the rhythm of the movement. As with the other presses, don't lean backwards, try to maintain an erect torso position throughout and keep your vision focused forwards. And above all, move with smooth, controlled motions, no jerking or swinging or arching. To begin the Arnold press, sit on your exercise bench with a back support and bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor. With your arms bent and your elbows in line or slightly in front of your body, hold a dumbbell in each hand at about shoulder height. Turn your palms to face your body. 
This is your start position. Inhale slightly more than usual and hold your breath as you press the dumbbells upward, keeping your eyes focused forward. Now here's the difference. As the dumbbells start to pass the top of your head, rotate your arms inward so you end up with a pronated grip. That's with your palms facing forward away from your body as your arms reach full extension. Without hyperextending your elbows, fully extend your arms, exhale, pause, and return to the initial position under control, rotating your arms as you lower the dumbbells with your palms facing you. Nothing creates that wide capped look of your shoulders like the overhead lateral raise. You can do it with free weights like we're going to demonstrate here or with cables, though you don't get the full squeeze of the contraction that you do with dumbbells on the upward extension. Let's walk through this one. Stand straight with your feet shoulder width apart. With your arms alongside your body, hold the dumbbell in each hand with a neutral grip. That's palms facing in. Inhale and hold your breath giving your torso strength and stability. Then raise your arms out to the sides until you reach a completely overhead position. See how she keeps her elbows slightly bent and see how nearly full extension brings the shoulders up into full contraction? You don't want to stop at shoulder level. You want that continuous tension and a full range of motion. Keeping the same erect posture throughout, no swaying or leaning, exhale as you return your arms to the initial position under control. Pause only briefly and continue into your reps. This is important. A lot of bodybuilders make the mistake, in my opinion, of packing on too much weight and lifting their arms only to shoulder level. Why limit your range of motion and stress the shoulder joint? If you want to get a greater contraction of the deltoid and other muscles in the shoulder region, back off the weights just 